students today we can discuss another fungal infection that is aspergillosis it's a very important condition and is usually uh, asked in examinations uh, its classification and different types are asked in examinations and then uh, in classification of fungal lung disease it is classified under filamentous fungi this aspergillus is belong to belong to uh, aspergillus belong to filamentous fungi now it is a mold like fungus it is a mold like fungus with a spore bearing it has a spore bearing head having rounded projections around the central body it has a spore bearing head with rounded projections uh, around the central body and look like say sunflower look like say sunflower uh, in its appearance and there are uh, several species of aspergillus and the important ones are uh, aspergillus clavatus aspergillus fumigatus aspergillus flavus uh, then aspergillus niger and aspergillus terrans so the important uh, five species of aspergillus are aspergillus clavatus aspergillus fumigatus aspergillus flavus aspergillus niger and aspergillus terrans and regarding the uh, infection it usually it occurs by inhalation of uh, spores and the common sources of infection are uh, decaying vegetation like in many other uh, fungal diseases this aspergillus is also very commonly seen in uh, decaying vegetation decaying vegetation then it is also present in uh, grains grains then droppings of birds Uh, so it's usually it's also seen as an occupational lung disease also uh, so it is commonly seen in farmers uh, then uh, grain storage workers uh, weavers etc so it is also observed as an occupational disease also uh, and this fungus behaves as a saprophyte or without producing any disease clinically or it can act as an allergen it can act as an allergen or otherwise it can be act as a truly parasitic organism so the fungus can act as a saprophyte can act as an allergen or it can act uh, act like a truly parasitic organism producing different infections or can ma- manifest as different infections in in the person then it is usually an opportunistic organism it's usually an opportunistic organism and it is one of the most common fungal systemic fungal infections affecting human being it is the most common fungal infection systemic fungal infection it affects all sexes it affects it is in and seen at all ages so that's about the etio pathology then regarding the clinical features the clinical features are also very important we can divide uh, aspergillosis under four headings there are four different presentations of uh, aspergillosis first of all uh, extrinsic allergic alveolitis then second one is aspergilloma then third one is invasive aspergillosis and the fourth one is uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or abpa so these are the four different presentations of aspergillosis so it can present as extrinsic allergic alveolitis can present as aspergilloma can present as invasive aspergillosis and lastly allergic bronch bron- uh, bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or abpa then we can discuss each and every presentation first of all extrinsic allergic alveolitis we have discussed that uh, under occupational lung disease also so it is occurs in non atopic it occurs in non atopic individuals uh, and the allergic uh, the type of response we can see in the lungs is type 3 reaction type 3 reaction type 3 hypersensitivity reaction and the manifestation uh, symptoms are cough then dyspnea can be there fever is there uh, 
it can identify the organisms in the sputum. And histophilia also is absent in uh, allergic alveolitis. But the serum precipitin, when we do the serum precipitin test, is positive. Serum precipitin test is positive. Uh, then the, regarding the skin test, with appropriate antigen demonstrate arthas or type 3 reaction. So skin test can be advocated to demonstrate uh, type 3 or arthas reaction. So that's about extrinsic allergic alveolitis. It is presented as a type 3 response or type, of, type 3 hypersensitivity reaction with uh, cough, dyspnea, fever as usual symptoms. Then the another presentation is formation of uh, fungal balls inside the lungs. That's called aspergilloma. Aspergilloma. It is a pseudotumor. <coughs> it's not at all a malignancy, not a tissue growth, but <coughs> it is simply a fungal ball. Fungal ball. Uh, this inhaled airborne source of aspergillus fumigatus uh, may lodge and germinate in the uh, lung paragama, especially damaged lung tissue. And after some diseases, certain diseases like tuberculosis, sarcoidosis, uh, histoplasmosis, bronchiectasis, uh, or malignancies, there can be formation of cavities. And this fungal element or the aspergillus fumigatus can grow in these cavities. So the fungal spore can enter the respiratory tract and then it will come and rest in this cavity and start up, will start to grow. And it can finally end up in a ball like presentation or you can see a fungal ball in the uh, cavity. Usually it is a chronic and uh, benign lesion. The common symptoms you get in uh, aspergilloma is that uh, there can be uh, <clears throat> the symptoms caused by uh, mechanical friction. Uh, another important point in, in the pathology is that it is capable of this aspergillus is capable of producing endotoxins with hemolytic property, endotoxins with hemolytic property. Uh, an anticoagulant form is also, uh, fact is also seen in uh, aspergillus infection, leading to aspergillus inf inf invasion also. Then symptoms, again symptoms are chronic cough, weight loss, fever, etc. Then we can diagnose aspergilloma by doing an x-ray. In the x-ray, you can see rounded masses or, or coin lesion. You can see coin lesion in x-ray. Uh, or you can see opacity, rounded opacity in just x-ray. Uh, here the chronic pulmonary cavity. Primarily there is a cavity and this cavity is filled with or partially or fully filled with this fungal uh, element. And this chronic pulmonary cavity is capped by a thin meniscus of air. If the fungal ball is not fully filled in the cavity, usually there will be a meniscus, thin meniscus of air. And you can see that there is plus extra presence of air or there is a cavity. Uh, it, is present, uh, it is present as hypertranslucency in X-ray. Uh, so the fungal ball is seen as opacity and over that the air fill area you can see as hypertranslucency. So you can see a thin meniscus of air or hypertranslucency over that opacity. And that sign is called monod sign, M-O-N-O-D, first of case, monod sign, monod sign. <clears throat> and this fungal ball may be observed to move within the cavity as the patient changes the position. Uh, if we take x-rays in different position, we can see slight changes in the uh, changes in the opacity. <clears throat> then a thick cavity wall can be seen, thickening of adjacent pleura, then calcification, all this can be seen in uh, x-ray. And the diagnosis is confirmed by positive serum precipitins for aspergillus. 
diagnosis is confirmed by positive serum precipitins for aspergillus. A skin test usually is not helpful. Sputum culture is also not so helpful. Uh, then, uh, regarding the prognosis of aspergilloma, this aspergilloma may remain stable. Usually, it remains as such for long periods. It can increase in size or it can spontaneously resolve. So, regarding the prognosis of aspergilloma, it can remain as such for longer periods, then can increase in size and create problem or can spontaneously resolve. Uh, then, like other fungal diseases, the important antibiotic or the preparation uh, modern medicine gave is amphotericin, amphotericin B. Then, uh, the fungal bond is creating or the aspergilloma is creating problem, surgical resection can be done. And if there is severe hemoptysis also, surgery is indicated. So that, that's about uh, the second presentation, aspergilloma. Then the third presentation is invasive aspergillosis. Here it presents as a necrotizing pneumonia in the old age or in the very old uh, patient. It can present as a necrotizing uh, pneumonia. This seen in chronically ill, very debilitated patients. And the, there are certain predisposing factors for this invasive aspergillosis, and it includes high dose of steroids, uh, cytotoxic therapy, marrow replacement, uh, etc. So, it is usually seen in uh, aged uh, persons with advanced uh, disease. Here, the fungal, there is fungal growth in the uh, pulmonary vasculature uh, resulting in hemorrhagic infarction, hemorrhagic infarction. Then from the lungs there can be dissemination also involving or that there can be spread of uh, the uh, fungus to different organs or different areas like GIT and it can spread to brain, heart, liver, spleen, kidney and even thyroid. And the clinical picture consists of fever, pulmonary rays, bronchi, again chest x-ray shows, uh, simple or multiple nodules in x-ray, uh, cavitation you can, uh, can be there, then features of consolidation also can be seen in invasive aspergillosis. Again, the uh, medicine they employ is amphotericin and they also advise uh, rifampicin also along with it. Amphotericin, profambicin and amphotericin. So that's about invasive aspergillosis. It is seen mainly in the aged, uh, aged patients uh, with advanced uh, disease. And the fourth presentation is ABPA, ABPA or allergic bongo pulmonary aspergillosis. The, here the patient is atopic. And there is often a long history of bronchial asthma or asthma-like symptoms can be there in ABPA. Then uh, the immediate, there is immediate hypersensitivity reaction and it is IgE mediated. Immediate hypersensitivity reaction and it is IgE mediated. And there can be type 3 reaction also. Type 3 reaction uh, is probably responsible for delayed or destructive changes in the bronchi and it's also uh, responsible for many radiological features also. And symptoms include, uh, as I have said, it is similar to or it is mainly seen in asthmatics or asthma-like patients having asthma-like symptoms. So uh, definitely dyspnea is there, wheezing can be there, uh, distressing continuous cough, mucopurulent and sputum. Uh, and another important feature is the sputum may contain uh, golden brown plugs of viscous material, golden brown plugs of viscous material. Uh, from this sputum, we can isolate aspergillus mycelia. We can culture aspergillus from this sputum, golden yellow sputum. <coughs> Along with this, there can be hemoptysis, then uh, pleural, chest pain, pleural pain, loss of weight and fever. 
then on examination there can be eosinophilia in the blood uh, and the appearance of and the can not appear that you can identify eosinophilia in the sputum and also uh, in the blood and aspergillus can be isolated from cultures also so that's the diagnostic feature you get in extrinsic alveolitis you can isolate the organs of all the fungal hyphae fungal fungus from sputum or uh, from blood itself then uh, doing radiology or chest x-ray shows homogeneous opacity uh, transient infiltration to lobar consolidation uh, consolidation so infiltration can be there uh, signs of infiltration consolidation uh, etc can be there in uh, chest x-ray then can be features of bronchiectasis also uh, and features like uh, ring shadows uh, then gloved finger appearance cloud finger appearance ring shadows honeycomb appearance lobar shrinkage all these are seen in avpa so these are the extra findings you get in avpa then how can we diagnose avpa few points we can say is presentation uh, like asthma then peripheral blood eosinophilia then uh, presence of history of chest radiograph abnormality presence of chest radiograph abnormality then positive skin test to an extract of aspergillus fumigatus skin test positive again then uh, serum precipit precipitating antibodies to aspergillus fumigatus then elevated total serum ige ig is raised then uh, fungal hyphae of aspergillus fumigatus can be seen in microscopy of sputum sputum micro microscopy shows uh, fungal hyphae of aspergillus fumigatus these are the diagnostic points then again treatment include oral cortical steroid uh, especially but mesolone then control of asthma like symptom physiotherapy etc so that's about appa and aspergillosis so aspergillosis is again uh, an important systemic fungal infection caused by filamentous fungi and uh, there are four important presentations for this uh, aspergillosis that is extrinsic allergic alveolitis aspergilloma uh, invasive aspergillosis and allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis or abpa so that's about uh, aspergillosis in a nutshell Thank you.